Hey painters, it's Ronnie with more painting tips. But before going on with the next steps on the pear and the shelf, I want to talk about a real common problem that people have, and that is making holes. It's the most common problem I experience in my classes, the most common comment that people make, uh-oh, I've made a hole, now what? A hole will happen for several different reasons. Uh, sometimes if you're stippling or smooshing with your brush too wet, with too much water or too much paint, you can make a hole. You can make a hole if you stay in one place too long, if you're smooshing or stippling. You can make a hole if you come back and put, try to put more paint over something that's not quite dry, or if you dry rub over your stipple before it's completely dry, you can make a hole. So let's talk about what we do. The very first thing you do when you make a hole is you get out of there. You don't want to mess around with it when it's wet. You can't fix it when it's wet. So you're going to leave it alone, go someplace else, let it dry. Now you're going to load up your round brindle blender for a dry stipple. So I'm putting my color in my brush, blot it, stipple it on my cloth a couple of times, and I'm just going to stipple right into the hole. Sometimes, if your hole is really bad, you might have to stipple it twice. When you put your first stippling in, you let it dry, and then you come back and you stipple again. Now letting these layers dry in between times is the important part. And also just putting paint in the hole. Once we've applied that paint to the hole, then we can either just dry rub it or we can do, make sure it's dry to the touch now, you can do a little more stippling over that area and then do your dry rub to blend it. You think of it kind of like if your dog dug a hole in your garden, the first thing you would have to do would be to fill up the hole with dirt before you could ever smooth it out. So that's what you need to do. You need to fill up that hole and then when it's dry you can smooth it out. Now that I've done some of the dry methods on the pear and the shelf, I want to apply a wet method. And the easiest wet method is a simple glaze and some people call it a wash. It's a great way to create continuity and value gradation as well as it smooths things out a little bit. Now most of the time I like to use just plain water with my paint but you can use retarder, gel retarder, magic mix, clear glazing medium, or even all-purpose sealer. Now this unifying glaze can be a warm color or a cool, co cool color, can be dark or it can be a medium dark. When I demonstrate this, pe people usually gasp with surprise. I'm going to use my dark value this time, so I'm going to mix my water with my dark color. I'm going to use my oval brinkle blender because I like the way this oval brush applies a wash. When I put this wash on, my dark area is going to get a little darker my medium area will get darker and my light area gets darker. This is just one one layer, one step in several steps. Now if you have streaks or blotches that's perfectly alright. The main thing is to get enough on there to make a difference. I'm going to use the dark color as well on the shelf. We'll just smooth things out a bit. This is just water and my dark value. The same dark value that I used on the shelf previously and on the pair. We want to make sure before we do any step on this, we want to make sure this is completely dry. Then we can go back and we can reestablish the light, but maybe we won't make it as big, and maybe we will. It just depends on what we did the first time, how big it was. Uh, each, each element that you paint is going to require uh, that you look at it and see what it needs. You can't just 
decide that you're going to paint everything exactly the same way. So I'm loading my brush for a dry stipple with my light value, my light pair value. I'm going to blot it on my brush, stipple a little bit. This now is dry to the touch. You don't want to stipple into it if it's wet. I want to set my brush down where I want that color to be the most intense, like I did before. I'll stipple my light area. And my light, as my light area extends out into the medium area, I'm going to lay my brush down and do my dry rubbing. I'll pick up a little bit smaller brush to work on that smaller portion of the pear. Stipple. If your brush does something you don't want it to do, you blot it. If you've got a little too much on there, then you blot it off. just going to join those together with a little bit of a rub. Okay, on the shelf we want to do a more linear application. Remember our dry brushing sometimes takes the place of dry stippling. So on the shelf I'm going to pick up my light color again, the same light color I used originally. And instead of stippling, I'm going to whisk to create a linear look. Remember, whisking means that you have just a little more paint and a little more water on your brush than you do if you're dry stippling. You want to create that color right off the tips of the brush. Now here we want to apply a little bit of light to this front edge and it doesn't look exactly the way I want it to but that's good because that sets me up for my next demo and I'll show you I'll be able to show you what would be the next step on these areas but remember now I'm not going to paint everything exactly the same way um, I'm using these elements to show you this, some specific methods that I use in my painting. It doesn't mean that I would necessarily paint every pair or every shelf or tabletop this exact same way. So today we just did one of the wet methods and I have more wet techniques to show you next time. So I'll see you then. In the meantime, paint happy!